Well, hi, my friends. This is Jay, and this is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. <laughs> I know what you thought. Oh, my gosh, is this Black Panther? Is this Wakanda forever? <laughs> well, no, but let me go ahead and give a disclaimer right away. All right, so I have never seen uh, the Black Panther movie, or I have uh, probably won't get to see the Wakanda movie ever movie, especially in the theaters. I just don't go to theaters. But maybe if it comes out in live streaming, I will. But let me take you back. Um, I don't... When I was young, I was not into comic books. We were... They were so much trying to teach us how to read and go to the library and read novels, and then we had to do a lot of book reports. So I really enjoyed and got used to reading books, for novels, and things from the library. So I never did get into comic books. The only time I got into fantasy was when Star Wars came out. I'm a, uh, you know, I'm of the age that I love Star Wars. But of course, as I got older, I just, you know, I went on left it behind and <laughs> went on to other things. <laughs> so, I just wanted you to know that this is the reason I even thought of this because for the last two or three weeks, you know, the movie pre has been, they've been setting up the premiere of the movie. And they've had the red carpet, the blue carpet, the purple carpet, every country they've been in, Latin America, they've been all over with the premiere taking all the actors and actresses in the movie uh, to have interviews and of course to show the costumes. Well I was just dumbfounded by all the costumes and they show interview the person, the, the people who who designed the costumes and come up with all the colors. It was just wow! How can you think of so many different costumes and colors and put it all together? That was a big job. But while I was looking at it I didn't see, like I said, since I really, this is too much fantasy for me, <laughs> you know, that living under the water and floating, it's just a lot of, but what I did see and I did notice while watching all these uh, different shows, it was everywhere. You, there was nothing else to watch, people, YouTube or on the te uh, television. I noticed that I kept thinking, you know, that looks like a knit stitch. Out of a book, I remember. That looks like one of the knit stitches I just saw a couple of weeks ago. You know what? That could be a cute, uh, pretty cable-like stitch. Or that could be this. Or I can see that in some of the yarn. So I went back to my yarn stash. I started gathering yarns. Just simple, everyday yarns. And I used this, the calendar, as a go, as a common denominator. And I said, I want to see if I can design something Wakanda style, colors and, and everything, but use different stitches or whatever and see if I can just make something new to share with my friends. So this is what I came up with. This is Jay's Knit, the Wakanda Forever Ribbed Collars. Now, I was going to say cows, but people outside of knitting, they don't know a cow. What is that? <laughs> Not cow. Cow. You know, you try to explain to them, what? <laughs> but if you look on Etsy or, or anywhere else uh, on the net, everyone, everywhere, every language, they know what a collar is. They have all kind of collars, all styles. They make them and... Uh, whatever, paint them and whatever. So that's why I decided to call this a rib, a collar, and we're going to mainly in this first one use the rib stitch. I decided to make this one as simple as possible. When I show you, I'm going to show you uh, an overview in just a minute and tell you, uh, you know, tell you the things I I took away from. I, I wanted to make it really simple and easy for beginners and seasoned knitters like myself. So what do you think of that? Now I'm sure my son will put a what do you call it an affiliate link code so if you want one of these calendars you know just for 
for yourself or to give as a gift to a, a person that you know that's going to see the movie and would like it. I went ahead and got the calendar because I have used calendars ever since I've been on YouTube. It's a common denominator for me. It, it helps me to pull colors together. It gives me ideas. So now, for instance, this, these colors that I'm about to show you are just simply the Wakanda Forever style. I have already designed two more styles that will be every day different things that we will knit. They will not be just like these. But I'm just letting you know. So if you're not in this style, don't worry. I've got a couple more already I'm working on. <laughs> in our regular styles. Different things, different stitches. Alright, let me just kind of quickly. Just now I have to see if I need to change my camera. I probably do. Which I don't want to, but I'm going to bring it down. Just... So what I'm going to do is just, since I have this calendar, just every once in a while, bring out, if I come up with a stitch that is Wakanda style, then I'll bring out the calendar and we'll look at the pictures or something so that you can see just what the calendar looks like. It's just a beautiful calendar. I need to probably back out, but I don't want to change my calendar thing here. And the colors, you see how the colors are so pretty. You see my yarn stash over there, right? I'll show you that in a minute. But I just wanted you to see. So if you do want to order, yeah, I ordered it off Amazon. And like I said, I'm sure he will put an affiliated link. So if you want to get one, you can get a calendar. And did you also notice I had the Black Panther uh, mug? I got those, I got that, I got a bunch of Christmas gifts. <laughs> Alright, so that's, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. This is what I, I, uh, I like I said, don't ask me any questions about all the, about the movie, because I don't know. Uh, it seems like it's going to be a nice movie, I don't know, but I was just overtaken with the colors and the costumes and all of that. And I wanted to give it a try in knit. So, let me show you what I came up with. Back in just a moment. All right, so now here is one of the first prototypes that I did. Of course, it was just pure, just trying to think of something, how to do it. And I thought, well, first thing off the bat, I want to just work in the round because I don't want a lot of uh, parts and, and putting things together. Next thing, I didn't want to have to do a lot of counting and working up a, a mathematical formula. Something just real, okay, I got to do this and this for each size. So I, I looked at that and I've made it real simple. We'll take care of all that in just a minute. But as you can see, it's simply a large pie shape. <laughs> and, of course, here is your neckline right there. It just slips over your head. And then when you slip it on, it turns into this. Uh, in the in some of the interviews they were doing, a lot of their designs came from the Mayans and the the Incas uh, civilization. Is am I saying it right? And uh, so they were saying. So I immediately thought, hmm, what stitch? Without having to do anything complicated. I didn't want to have to get a book out. I didn't want to have to uh, type up or do a chart. And I thought, you know, if you can follow me and do a knit to, purl to, knit to, purl to, you can follow me to the next step. Knit four, purl four. Knit four, purl four. Knit four, Pearl for and so on and that is simply what I decided to come up with something with no math not a lot just simple counting and, and it'll be an easy way when I show you the little simple formula how it fits and uh, but the main thing is it's just made out of stash yarn stash yarn of course since this is the Wakanda the Black Panther Wakanda uh, the most common yarn or the uh, the basic yarn, a main color, is black. 
I wanted to try to add black, but I do have some without black. But, uh, you know, but that's what a lot of the theme in the movie. And you saw on the calendar, black is like uh, a common denominator color. And I thought, well, what can I do? And I'm telling you, I had so much fun licking that stash just going in. Now, what I do suggest, when you look at your stash, put different brands together. I tried to stay with, you know, kind of in the same brand, or, but especially the same weight. As you know, I am, I use user number four weight. Not a high, not a thick number four like roving, or a thin number four like showing the ball type thin, but just something in the middle. Don't have to be exact, but just a nice regular weight of number four yarn. And you can use plain, you can use sparkle, you can use any quality if you want. Uh, now, I, next, I don't wool, you have to know how to handle that, but if you want uh, a blend. You can do that. It's just so easy how you will be able to knit this collar and it goes and before you know it, you'll have this. Now let me show you another one. Let's see which one I want to show you next. Okay, here's one without the black. Oh, just move this one over. Saw that one. Now here's one where I said, well, let me just see how it look. And, you know, for the person, like say, everybody may not be into the Wakanda. I have to keep saying that because I kept saying the wrong word. <laughs> now, I didn't do any steaming on this because I was trying to hurry up and get this out here. So, but you can see it does. It makes the pie circle like that. This is just everyday regular yarn. These are scrap. If you've made the, what, what are they making? What do a lot of people make? The scrap temperature blankets where you have a lot of scraps. That's exactly what I was trying to use up scrap yarn. Yarn where I have maybe half a skein, one skein, you know, maybe a half, two and a half skeins. And so when you wear it, you put it on, it goes like that. Now this is some sparkly. And then here's, I don't know, some kind of a ribbon looking strange. And then here's some more of the kind of party sparkles. Some of that where you have the little sparkly yarn left over. Have a lot of that. And like I said, you, now on this one, the main thing is we're going to have a basic color, like see, and I'm going to use black in most, but then a basic color and then at least two other main colors. So three main colors and then one accent color or yarn. So three main colors and then an accent. Let me go back to this one right quick. You can see uh, here I had, I've got a lot of the novelty yarn, which is what... Pam had brought out and it made me remember all the novelty yarn and I'll show you uh, not in this video but in another that I'm working on but this is yarn I would just I don't know what I was thinking when I bought this stuff <laughs> but anyway it makes a nice accent so here are my three main colors black blue and purple then here's this accent color so I'm gonna call it the accent color to kind of bond it all together so how's that look? Now I'm going to show you, I call this one my fail. <laughs> like I said, I had to make several prototypes because I was trying to cut out anything that was going to be hard or going to be where, oh, now we've got to have a formula and we've got to do this and we've got to, no, I didn't want to do all this. This one is still on the needle, so it's not laying as flat. But this one was kind of a fail because, I don't know, I just didn't like the combination or something I don't know yeah it, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it it's still pretty but I was just you know had to make different prototypes trying different yarn scraps that's what this is actually this one's still on the needle so it's not gonna 
I mean, it's pretty, but you can see it. Let's see now if that's showing up. Oh, look at that. Now, does that not look Aztec style? Does not does that not look Wakanda style? <laughs> Only because of the ribbing. If we had done it solid, it may have looked okay, but the ribbing stands out because, see, you wouldn't steam that down. You're just going to leave it in the texture that it is. And, like I said, if you can do follow me in knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and then knit four, purl four, knit four, purl four, and then I have something else to add on down as we get near the bottom. So what do you think of that one? Now the one that I just finished, I just finished, this one's hot off the needles. <laughs> Woo! When I saw that purple, when I saw that one, I just had to have it. And, of course, I like green, and I like this particular kind of color green. Let's see, can I get it lined up here right so you can see it straight? There we go. There's the neckline. There's purple. Black is my one of the main colors. I have this beautiful apple type green or beautiful, uh, I don't even know what you'd call that. Apple type. And then I have this deep. Now it looks blue on here, but it's really a beautiful, and I'll show you in the basket. It's really a purple. So here it looks blue, but it is not blue. And then I had this little tiny, some little scrap, um, what do you call it? Variegated yarn. So variegated yarn would make good the little accents that we need to kind of kind of put things together. It just helps to, to bring the two together. So I had uh, the variegated yarn, and I can pull that out and show you what I use for that as my accent. And so now all we have to do is get some FYI information on the supplies you need, look at a little yarn real quick, and we will get started knitting. On Jay's Knit, the Wakanda Forever Rib Collars. What do you think of that? Alright, I'll be right back. Okay, real quick, I just want to share with you, Just, I'm not going through the yarn, it's scrap yarn. Look in your stash, you know what you have, you know what you might like to have or use. As you can see, I have a pretty basket. Get yourself a little container to put it all in so it looks pretty. It can range from anything from sparkly to just plain old whatever. Pretty colors. And... But if you can't, if you're a person that maybe have problems trying to match up colors, find the variegated yarn that you have in your stash. You don't have to do, like I said, Wakanda uh, style for this one. You can just pick up anything. So if you got a variegated, look at the colors in the variegated yarn and pick those out. That's what I did on the one I'm about, um, uh, you know, that I worked on before. It had green and purple and. Uh, didn't I didn't put the teal in there because I'm gonna use it now. Had black, so see, you can just take up some scrap variegated yarn you had for something that you had some left over, left over yarn. That's what it is, people. All right, so now the next thing I want to share with you real quick because we want to start knitting, and I may have to change the camera. So let's see. First of all, I'm gonna put the yarn. See, can I set my basket of yarn back over here, out of the way, without knocking everything down. Let me knock some things down. And then we're going to go to what working formula that I do have. Now let me see if I can lay this down or hold it up, which is better. I guess I should better hold it up. Alright, so now here we go. There's no math to, to worry about or to check on or to see. I'll hold it real just like he, this so that you can see it. All right. I've kind of separated it into two sizes. And you'll see why in just a minute. First size, if you're small, medium, or large. You're just small, medium, and large. You just kind of have to know 
This is not uh, something you've got to worry about decreasing and shaping and all that. Uh, it doesn't. It does not go over your shoulder. It just goes to the end of your shoulder. So it's a collar. Okay. So small, medium, and large. You will need a number nine circular needle. That's what I use with my number fours when I do my sweaters. So if you've done sweaters, you already have the needles. I always try to use what we already have if I can. All right. Does that make sense so far? And it needs to be a nine circular, either 29 inches in length. Uh, some of you may have 24 inches in length. It does not, 36 is too, 36 or 32 or 36 in length is too large. We won't be able to make the circle. We're going to be knitting it around. So it needs to be either 24 inches long or like 29. 29 is a standard. Nine, number nine, 29. Later on, when we get near the bottom of the collar, you will need another needle. You will need a number 9 circular, but this time you do need either a 36 or a 40 or a 40. You know, it, it just needs to be much longer than the 29. But I, you don't need to go up to maybe, uh, you know, like 50 or anything like that. A 36 or somewhere around a 40. Maybe a 48, but I think uh, either one of those would be great. So that's that's a needle you will need. Two number nines, one 29 inches long, one at least 36 to at least 40 inches or a little over. All right, the next size, that's me. <laughs> size, if you are a 1X, 2X, 3X, or plus, all right, we're going to start, just like the first group, with a number 9 circular needle, because that's what I work in my number 4 weight yarns, and it's 29 inches long. We will continue to work. Everyone will work down to a certain length, and this size, we will have to increase. We will have to do a second increase. This size would only do one increase, but we that are on the more fluffy side, we're going to increase again as we get near the bottom of the collar. So you will need a 9 circular needle, 40 to 48 inches, or if there's a 50, you know, um, I don't know if you need to go all the way up to a 60 or not, you can try. But it needs to be, oops, and I made a mistake right here. Oh, I'm so glad I saw that. Wait. We will change, if for the larger size, instead of a number 9 on this, let me make that change. The first group, they stay on a number 9 all the way through. The second group, the 1X, 2X, and 3X, we are going to move up to a number 10 circular, 40 to 48. So you will need to look around and see if you have a number 10, 40 to 48, or 50. Just something bigger because we're going to do a, uh, a second increase. Everyone, everywhere, every size, every fluff, it doesn't matter. Everyone will cast on 104 stitches. And then I always add one extra stitch so that I can do my, so I can connect in the round. Some people connect without that stitch. If you're a seasoned knitter, you connect however you want. But if you're learning, I'm just going to share with you how I do it. So everyone will cast on, on your number nine, here and here, 104 stitches plus one extra stitch, which will bring you up to 105. Now we're going to get ready to start working a 2 by 2 rib, and we're going to work it for 2 inches. All right, I'm going to hold that. You take a look at it. Oh, I'm so glad I caught that. All right, back in just a moment. Okay, here is my color combination that I'm going to work this one in. I simply have a teal. I had a skein of this. I thought, oh, that's pretty. And like I said... It can be Wakanda or not. Then I had this, some of that silver that I've used before. It has a little sparkle to it. I don't know what it is, but I don't know it'll work. Of course, I'm going to use black as my second uh, main color. And then I had this. I think this must be one of those party yarns. It has a sparkle in it. And I'll use that as my third. So this is... Really just a soft, you know, nothing really shocking, but I think it's going to flow really nice. All right, so now the next thing I want to show you real quick, just for those who need a little reminder, 
I have a sample here. I'll pull in and lower the camera down. See if I can. Uh... All right, so now we're just going to connect. I'm going to show you how to connect in the run. How I do it. Like I said, you do whatever if, that you're used to. Here's some little yarn. Look on my little bread tie. <laughs> Take a little yarn out. All right. Main thing is, okay, everyone is casting on. This is just a sample, of course. But everyone is casting on 104 plus the 1. So I've cast on 60. And then here's, I think there's 60 on here. And then there's the extra 1. All right. Now, all I need to do. Now, I'm right-handed. And I'm a thrower. I, I knit this direction. Uh, if you're left-handed, I guess you know how to reverse or do whatever. So I want to make sure that my working yarn, all of this, is on my right side. Because I'm right-handed. And then I lay it down and I check to make sure that little spine thing, that little spine stitch, is turned towards the center. Can you see that? That's the only thing you have to remember in knitting in the round. So that you don't have anything twisted like that. So all the stitches are facing inward. All right, so now I'm just going to grab up and let's see. I guess I will need a. I've got to reach. I can't believe I didn't have this ready. I'm telling you, I think I'd be, I'm ready all the time and then I'm not. <laughs> okay, so put my basket back over there. I'm, you're going to need a marker. First thing I want to do real quick, I just simply slide all the stitches up towards the points. I take the last stitch and I put it to my left hand needle. I just slide it over. Just like that. That's my connecting. Some people do a slip one, knit one, or pass slip stitch over. There's lots of ways. I just, I guess somebody chopped me this at the yarn shop and I always use it. Then I'm going to put my marker on. Just like that. I put a marker. So I'll know where the beginning of the round. And I'll show you how to mark that even more later. Now I just simply, um, if it comes off, just put it back on. Now I need my yarn to be in the back because we're going to start and we're going to knit the first two stitches on the left hand needle together. Which is going to pull it together. I just, you don't even have to use the tail if you don't want to, but... Make sure you pull it nice and snug. See, I'm going to just knit those two stitches and then pull it tight. Pull the tail tight. Tighten up on everything. And that's one knit stitch. Now I'm going to knit the next stitch. That's knit two. Yarn in front. Purl two. Yarn in back. We knit two. In front, purl two. Okay, continue around. I'll just come back just to make sure, and then we will be ready. I'll show you the next step. So all we're doing right now is make sure you don't fall into the rhythm of knit one, purl one, which is what we normally do. But it's knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. Take your time to get the first round. We do it in rounds. Correct because we're going to build on it for two inches and you don't want to have something wrong But I will come back at the end All right, all right, so I'm back and I'm near the end and just that you'll know that you end it right You've taken your time. You've gone back knit purl knit to purl to all right, then I Want to make sure then the last four stitches I have is knit to I want to make sure that I end with a purl two because we started the row with knit two and we don't want two knits on this side to meet two knits on this side. Does that make sense? So say if you were off a stitch, maybe you just miscounted or you just, just something. All right, you could just back out a few stitches. I'd back back. I wouldn't put it right there. I'd back back and then if I needed one extra stitch, some kind of way I came up short, I'd just knit into the front and into the back just like this and this of a stitch and that will give me an extra stitch and then I can continue on uh, in the pattern so I had knit two purl two so now I need to knit two so don't worry about it it's easy just to sometimes I just count it wrong maybe I got interrupted or anything 
So, but you do have to make sure, like I said, the thing is to make sure that you end with a purl two to end the row before the marker so that you won't run into, have two knits. Okay, so now I put the yarn in back, I slide the marker, and guess what? I'm on the next round, and I start again. Knit two. Purl two. All right. Now you're going to work that for two inches. I didn't want to have everybody counting, trying to count rows. Some people, especially if you're new, miscount rows. So you're going to knit your ribbing. And this is what you're going to have when we come back. When we come together again, you will have, um, oops, you have two whole inches just measure and if you go over a row don't worry about it that's why I didn't have you to count because some people might count and be off a, a stitch or two so all you need is two inches of ribbing and then I will show you the next step but you can see how the neckline is forming oh let me just give you this too another good thing is somewhere along the line as you are working we have the marker that's moving it's the marker that we move all right, go ahead and mark, take one of these locking markers and put it in the same, on the same row, somewhere down here, just to make sure that you have it marked in another place. And as I move up, uh, further up, I also like to mark it ever so often. You'll be surprised how easy it is to, these little markers to fall off and you go, oh my gosh, where's my, the, the beginning of my round? So that's just, go ahead and mark it, and we'll mark it later on too. All right, I'll see you back at two inches. <laughs> Take your time. You want this round, these uh, two inches to be really pretty and nice and uniform. And I will see you back shortly. All right, I am back. I hope that you have two beautiful inches of two by two ribbing. And that now we want to change our color. All right, so now I've brought in the accent color. This was a main color, so this is going to be my accent color as I start down my collar. All right, so the first thing I want to share with you is how to change, how I change colors. Everyone may have different ways. Like you say, listen, you don't have to learn everything at one time. Learn and grow as you go. Just learn and grow as you go. And you may start out real simple like I'm going to show you, and then you'll grow into something better. Of course, if we were knitting a sweater, most knitters don't want to knot. But these things like this frustrates a lot of new knitters because, you know, we just loop the yarn over the needle and just keep on knitting. But, you know, if, you, if your yarn keeps falling off, you may ask, well, Jay, can I just tie it on? Okay, yeah, we're just going to tie it on. So let me show you what to do. All right, so I am knitting up to... To my marker. I'm knitting the last round and I have a nice two good two inches and if you went around over it's all right doesn't matter. All right, I like to stop at least two stitches before the marker. This is when I change color, when I change my color of yarn or if I change the needle size. I always knit up to two stitches before the marker. See that? You see the marker? And I have two stitches. All right, now for new regular knitters, we would just keep on knitting and just lay the new yarn on top of the needle and keep right on knitting. But for new knitters, I want you to just simply cut the yarn, leave about a three inch tail. Can you see that? Just cut the yarn. Well, I got some bad scissors, but make sure I was on. You just cut your yarn. And then take the new yarn. See, now there's the new yarn. Here's the yarn I just cut. I have two stitches left to knit. I'm going to, you know how you take it, you know how you tie your baby shoe string or something or a little bow or something? You take the two ends and just put them together. Like I said, most knitters don't like knots. And you will learn and grow as you go. So don't worry about it right now. Just get this tied on. You will not be able to see it. This is not a sweater. 
<laughs> so I take the two strands just like this, and then I wrap it around my finger. You know how you just tie a little? And then I run those two ends through the, through the opening. And then I pull it closed, just like that. So now I have, I have a little bit of yarn left of the old color. See that? It's going to work out perfect. And then I have a knot where I've joined the new color. So I'm going up and I look to make sure what stitch am I doing. I have two purl stitches left, so I'm going to take and I'm going to purl the two next two stitches. And guess what? It runs me right up to my new yarn. So I put the yarn in back. Let me get out some yarn here. This stuff is kind of, boy, it just sticks to your hand so bad. But it's going to work great for this little, my little sample here. So now I slide the marker. Now with this new color, all I want you to do, everyone, just knit around. Because we're going to change the size of the uh, ribbing. So I want to do it in a clean, easy way. So And then plus we're going to do our first increase. And this is the easy way easiest way to do it and keep it nice and clean and simple. So I'm just using the new color. I'm going to knit all the way around and I will see you back at the marker. Alright, we are just knitting. Not in pattern, just knit every stitch. I'll be back as we get close to the marker. Alright, I am back around to my marker. I am simply knitting my first contrasting color or my first accent color. We're going to call it accent color. And I just knit up all the stitches to the last stitch. I slide my marker, stop. All right, now remember the sequence now. We just knit around, one whole round. We're back at the marker and ready to start again. This time I'm going to do a big increase. And we're, it's going to be, uh, we're going to double our stitches. And we simply start with a knit one. So here we go. Knit one. Stop. Now, yarn over, knit one. The repeat is yarn over, knit one. 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 All the way around. If you get distracted and you stop or lay it down, you probably have to come back and start with, a, with the yarn over. Or you can just go back and check. But most likely you have to start with a yarn over, knit one. Yarn over and knit one. Yarn over, knit one. Alright, I will see you at the marker again. See, now we're putting those little eyelet stitches or little yarn over holes. Can you see them? And that's going to double our stitch count. Every one, yarn over, knit one. I will see you at the marker. All right, so I'm back around, coming up to my marker, and I'm standing pattern, yarn over, knit one. Yarn over, knit one. Yarn over, knit one. Yarn over, knit one. And there's one stitch left, so I'm going to yarn over and knit one. Okay, we started with, everyone, with 104 stitches. We don't count that, that, one, that little extra stitch. So now we should have at least 208 stitches. So now the next thing I want you to do, once we finish that, you slide the marker. And we need to go one more round. So that will make three altogether. We 
the first round we knit around, then we did the increase. Now we need to take all these yarn overs off. See all the yarn over stitches? Well, now we have to knit them off before we can go any further. Now this is where you need to take your time, make sure, so you just start knitting. You knit around again. So now I'm going to knit and everything, and if you notice, you will always have a stitch and then a yarn over. See, there's a stitch and then there's a yarn over. So you'll have, you're just knitting. There's the stitch and then the long yarn over. Just say if for instance, you knit around and all of a sudden you say, oh, Jay, I think I missed a yarn over. So you have a stitch, and then all of a sudden you have another stitch, and you know there should be a yarn over in between. So just reach down and just lift up a bar, just lift up a strand, and stick it on the left-hand needle. Now just knit that and continue around. You're just knitting now. But you want to make sure you pick up every one and knit every yarn over. And it's going to stand out like that. Can you see that? Alright, continue to knit around all the stitches. And wait for me as you get close to the next marker. Wait for me there because we're going to have another color change. So you want to go up. Knit all the way up and then stop and I will be back and join you there. Alright, so I'm back around and I am ready to change my color again. I suggest not trying to change the color and the needle at the same time. We def we as you can see we have a lot of stitches and we will be changing our needle. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do the next color change, which I'm going to add black. I'm going to add black. Let's see, what can I throw my yarn down here on the floor? There we go. So I've already cut the old yarn. I left for this one had a yarn over, so I left three stitches this time. This one had a yarn over, and I didn't want to have that yarn over mess it up, so I just left three stitches. As long as you leave two, and in this case I had to leave three. All right, I'm going to take my black, the old yarn I cut. I'm going to take my black, and I'm going to just put it up here like I say this is um, you know most knitters don't like knots but like I say when you're learning learn and grow as you go so we're just gonna go ahead and tie it around our finger take and then poke the two ends through the the hole and now you have a knot all right and then let's go ahead and continue to just knit Whatever stitches were left, we just knit. But I don't, it just wouldn't have been a good idea to change the needle and the yarn all at the same time. So now I can just go up here. And if a little black gets on the wrong side, don't worry about it. It's all going to be covered. All right. Now I can just drop everything, all the tails, slide the marker. Now I'm just going to work with black. But watch what we're going to do. After I finish doing all, working all those stitches, now I'm going to change the ribbing. We started with knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. Now we're going into knit four, purl four. Because as you know, we have raised our stitch count to over 200 stitches. So I'm going to hold that tail in the back. I'm just going to start right here. I'm going to go knit one, two, three, and four. I'm going to knit four. Then yarn in front. Now I'm going to purl four. See, I'm, I'm in the rib stitch, but now I'm doing a different rib stitch. Two, three, and four. Okay, yarn in back. And like I say, we uh, it's a little tight, but we will change the needle size on the next row, which will be a lot easier. All right, and if you get 
lose your place, just go back and go knit one, uh, purl one, two, three, four. Now knit four, one, two, three, and four. Yarn in front, purl four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so now you know the pattern goes around. Knit four, purl four. Knit four, purl four. And I will see you at the marker or close to the marker. And we will change. Now you will be ready. Once we get to the marker, you can pull out your nine people that are small, medium, and large. You can get your nine 36 or 940, whatever you have a little longer. All right? Everyone else, um, the 1X, 2X, 3X, you're going to be looking at a number 10. A number 10. And if you have, um, you know, let's see what number is it. Let's see, what, what did I say? A 40 or a 48, somewhere along that line. Uh, just see what you have longer uh, in... Um, in that size that we can start taking all of these stitches off because when you look at it I know what you're thinking Jay I can't that's that's too small <laughs> all right continue in the pattern around and I will meet you as you get close to the marker have your needle ready and we will change the needle size all right so if you are small, medium, and large, you have a number 9, 36, or maybe a 40 needle that we are you're going to switch to. If you are larger, the larger size, you have a number 10. So here's my number 10, and you're going to do the exact same thing. The only thing, we're not cutting any yarn or anything. We're just simply switching the needles. I go to two stitches right before the marker. I always like to change things on this side of the marker. It just makes it easy to me. So the first thing I have to do, okay, I'm going to be knitting from this needle to my new needle right here. So I'm going to have, you need to cap this end of the needle you're working on right now. See, that's the needle. So I'm going to cap that and start letting the stitches pull around. It's real tight, but you can do it. <laughs> and since we're staying in pattern now, remember, the pattern now is, oh, and if you did come up short, say if you came up short, say, okay, Jay, at the end, you're supposed to have four purl stitches, and maybe you only had three. That just meant you left, missed a yarn over somewhere. But never fear, all you have to do is back up a couple of stitches, knit into the front and back, and then, uh, then come back to this last purl section right here. And you'll stop at the last two, just like I did when I was changing colors. All right? But I, make sure you cap this so these stitches won't come off. So now I grab my black yarn. I grab the new needle. I put the needle in. And I kind of give it a nice little tug here. Make sure the yarn is in back. Well, no, we're purl. I'm sorry, I'm on the purl stitch, so my yarn needs to be in front. I'm sorry, I had to purl. Remember, these last two stitches were part of the purl. So, just put your needle. Make sure the needle's in. The yarn is in front of the needle you're working with. See how I have it in front? All right, now pull it tight and purl the last two stitches before we slide the marker onto the new needle. So there's one. It's a little fiddly and for someone new it just takes a little time. All right, then I slide the marker and then I the yarn goes in back because once I slide the marker, guess what? Then I'm going to knit four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, you can tighten up or pull anything, kind of get it. So uh, then yarn in front. This is where it's just a little tight, but once we put it on this longer needle, it's going to be, that's when the magic happens. So now I'm going to purl four. One, two, three, and 
two, three, and four. And this is when you can see if you if there's a stitch that you got in the wrong place. Knit one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, and you're gonna work around all the way around on the new longer needle until we get closer to the mark again. So I will see you, but be sure to cap this needle so that the stitches won't come off. All right, I'm trying to save time by just doing a lot of the knitting off camera. So now you're in the pattern. Knit four, purl four, knit four, purl four as you work around on the new needle. Back in just a minute. All right, my friends. When I left, of course, as you can see, I have been working off camera because sometimes, like I said, this is the whole point of my YouTube channel. I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> so I work some off camera because your eye will see it as we're talking about it. So I'm going to take a moment here and just kind of catch back up to, because I've got, since I had so much done. When I left, we had, you had learned how to change the color. We had increased, we were up here, and we were working here with the accent color. I'm just using this little gray, little silvery looking color. Then you, I shared with you how to change, uh, not only the color, but then how to change the needle size. We change the needle size uh, just to get a longer needle because as you saw when we did this increase here we doubled. Everyone cast on 104 stitches. Well by the time we did this round here first that big increase everyone's up to 200 at least 208. You know you may have dropped one here or there but you can put it back and, you know that's no big deal. So now we had, uh, when I left, we had um, attached the black, and you were to start working the black. Now the black uh, started, or this little, this small little section of black, started the new 4x4 four four ribbing. This was 2x2, two two, now we're going to do 4x4. Four four. And it was simply knit 4, purl 4, knit 4, purl 4, all the way around, one round, then go that well one round to the marker and then the second round and then the third round when you get you get to the third round of the black okay we're going to have another color change and that's this color or whatever color you're going to add as your next uh, main color does that make sense so far i'm trying to keep things in the same step because really you're just going to be following the same sequence after this. This is why I can just kind of walk you through most of the rest of it. So uh, and then each section of the main color I try to put at least two inches just so that it pops and it really stands out and you can see the ribbing. Otherwise what's the point? So I after I um, uh, picked up and changed the color from black to this new color here then of course I started again going around knit four purl four knit four purl four for my two inches I have reached two inches after you reach two inches then we do like I said we just simply do the same sequence the only thing is we don't have to repeat this increase this main increase we do it that first time and that's it so now I have added this uh, gray color again it's just my accent color just something you may have another one uh, you may have gold, you may have blue, whatever it is. And you're going to repeat the same thing. I'm just going to knit. This time, you don't have to do the ribbing because we're going to set up for the new ribbing. There's another ribbing coming. <laughs> so you have to set up for it by just simply knitting all the stitches around to the marker. That's one round. Knit around again. That's two. Knit around the third time, which I have just finished here. And we're going to change back. What's the sequence again? Back to black. So for me, for this thing, you're going to learn how to just find colors that you want to add. But this, try to keep the sequence so that you'll know how to do the colors. And then, you know, but you can experiment with colors. So I have my black right here. Okay. I have my black. 
and everyone has uh, it's already, we had already changed to our longer needles and like I said normally needles do not like knots but for those who are so new I just share with you how to do it just a simple put the two tails together wrap it around your finger pass the two tails through the little loop and pull down you you'll leave a little bit because that's we have two stitches two or three I may have three but two stitches before the marker to finish up we're just knitting around and we're getting ready now to add this black let's see if I can let's see if that's on camera better if I come a little closer so it's the same sequence so that you can stay on track and know where you are all right so like I said, I'm just knitting so I'm just going to knit real quick just get it started just to show you it's the same but this time, okay, wait. So see, I finish up those couple of stitches I had before the marker because I'm changing color. And you see how it just blended right in. Now I can go to the new color, slide the marker, which is black, for me. Now, let me just say a real quick thing. Uh, some of you... Uh, already know that black is a difficult color to work with. Um, it just happened to be my choice on this, but uh, you know, if black is not good for you, if your eyesight or it's just not good, it does cause, it can cause, you know, problems trying to see everything, unless you have good lighting, then just pick another color. Like I said, you don't even have to even do the Wakanda theme. I'm just sharing with you my little design. But you could put this, this, this could have been pinks and uh, you know pinks and light greens and yellows it could be any color okay but you need an accent color and at least two or three main colors so now I just go right back just like what we did here I go back into pattern all right um, let me just look let me just see if I'm gonna change anything I had one little thing I was going to change all right We're going to just go knit one, two, three, four, and then we're going to purl. One, two, three, four. And you can spread them out and count. See, now there's what we have so far. We knit five, uh, excuse me, knit four. One, two, three, four, and then we purl four. One, two, three, four. And of course, you're going to work that around and you're going to do the three rounds just like we did here. Okay? On the third round, we will change, and I'm going to give you some information because that will be the round where we're going to. Let me just go around. I don't want to give you too much information right now. Let's just get around. I will be right back. Knit, knit four, purl four. Knit four, purl four. We haven't changed. We're still in that, uh, that ribbing stitch. Back in just a moment. Okay, so I worked some off camera because I know, just like when I started uh, working on my first one, I wanted to get to the end so I could see what the, what the end was going to be. <laughs> All right, so what I have done, just so that we're on the same page, I was working on black because that was my color that, um, you know, my one of my accent colors. I went around three rounds. One, two, and this is the end of the third round. This is where we're going to separate the two sizes. Where we're going to do uh, the small, medium, and large sizes. You can change a color here. And then just you're going to just continue to knit. The four by four ribbing for another two inches then you will bind off in the four by four uh, rib uh, stitch and you know how to bind off in in the pattern but I I'll have to I'll put something up just for those who might like okay I'm not sure Jay <laughs> but but I want to go ahead and put that out there now so as we separate the two sizes small medium and large you're just going to continue to knit now 
if you have black like I have and you you can continue to knit in black for another two inches make sure it's you know some nice a nice two inch and then you'll bind off in the pattern the four by four pattern or you can change colors so we are right up to the point right now let me just show you I'm at the point where I'm ready to I have four purl stitches left and this is my last uh, round this is round number three and then when I slide the marker, uh, well, now if you were changing colors, you, you'd go back to two stitches before the marker. Remember, I like to change two stitches before the marker. You tie in your new color right there. Or, sizes, 1X, 2X, 3, and larger, you can also change colors right here in the same way that we've been doing it. All right? Because we are going to increase, or you can work, continue to work in black. I'm going to continue to work in black because I couldn't come up with another color that I like with this. And I want to, like I said, I'm trying to get you to the end so that you can see. So let's just say I'm continuing, um, I'm going to continue to knit in black for my last, using it as my last color. All right, so I'm just going to purl these two stitches right before the marker. And I slide the marker for 1x, 2x, and 3x plus. This is what you're going to do to increase. You start your increase after you've done your three rounds. You knit two stitches, one, two, and in the next stitch, now it's kind of hard to see because this is one thing I didn't think of, but you're going to reach in and I may do it on um oh let me see can I do it? oh wait let's see can I do it on my little sample here this one might work okay so you're going to all right this is how to do the simple increase right, let's see if I'm gonna back out of this little this is just that little sample I was working on all right so I pass the I slide the marker either you've changed colors or you stand with the same color so I knit two then the next stitch right here, I knit, no, I'm sorry, the next stitch right here, I reach here, there's a, a loop of yarn right there that comes in front of that stitch. You reach down, pull that loop up and go through the front, we've done it before, put it on the left hand needle right there, and then you knit. You've just increased one, one, two, three, four. Now you're going to have five stitches in the ribbing where you only had four. Now you don't have to do it on the purl. We're only going to do it on the knit. So let me just do, in fact, I'll move this because I might want to keep this and do put it on. Uh, okay, so you'll purl your four. I'm just kind of working here and just, just me. Just want you to see it. You'd purl four, then yarn in back. Now, when you get to a, uh, a knit, you'll knit one, two. All right, in the next stitch, you reach and find that little loop that goes around, that goes around, so that you just stick your needle in, pull it up, and take the left hand needle and go in to the front of it. Now knit, so now I have three, four, and five. And then of course you just put the yarn in front, purl the next four stitches. So now your your ribbing is five knit five, purl four. Knit five, purl four. So I'm gonna purl four right quick. One, two, three. And four so I don't have to increase in the purl section yarn in back but every time I come to a knit section I'm going to knit two one two almost out of yarn here then the next stitch is where you pick up the loop so I just stick my needle in there pick that loop up and then 
take the left hand needle point and go in from the front then knit one two all right so that will give you five stitches in the knit uh, one two three four five but you only still have four stitches in the purl does that make sense is that you think you easy to follow that See, so you just one, two, three, four for the pearl, but you'll have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I didn't need, knit, knit my knit the last stitch. So now you'll have one, one, two, three, four, five. I knit two, I increase in the next stitch, and then knit four, five. And you will do that sizes. You know the larger sizes for at least two inches then you will simply bind off in the rib pattern that you are working in so you'd bind off five and then you would bind off the the um, you know the next ones and uh, that way you'll stay in pattern you bind off five knits Find out five pearls, you know, you just keep going until you get to the end. I hope I didn't botch that too much. <laughs> I just didn't want it to go on too long and just drag you down, you know, because, you know, people get excited, but then you got to keep, you know, people like, okay, I want to get on, okay, I want to I want to pick up me some colors, I want to start. So that is the way to finish. Smaller sizes, you just knit for two inches, bind off in pattern just like I did just like I just shared there you bind off okay or well I haven't let's see if I can bind up let's see if I can put some yarn on here right quick just to show you how to bind off I'm sorry I thought I did in pattern just for fun just so that you can see it again so whatever whatever ribbing you have now this little sample doesn't have um, I just have the two by two ribbing so I'll just bind off in it so you knit one Knit the second one, reach back and bind off. So whatever ribbing you have, you just continue. Go ahead and knit the next one. Is it a purl or is it a knit? Whatever it is, you bind off in that stitch. Okay, so I reach back and bind off. That was a knit stitch. Okay, now the next stitch is a purl, so I bring my yarn in front. I knit that stitch. I reach back and I bind off. The next stitch, what is it? It's a purl stitch, so I purl. Uh, no, on this one, it's a knit stitch, so I put my yarn in back. I knit. I reach back and bind off. What's the next stitch? It's a knit stitch. So I knit. I reach back and bind off. Okay, the next stitch is a purl stitch, so I purl it. And I reach back and bind off. We've done it on several, oh, many things, so... You just work it in pattern. Every once in a while, stop and pull and keep it loose. Just like we do on our sweaters. Nothing different when we're binding off the bottom ribbing or the cuff. Well, let me put my little cap on because I don't want to lose this because I've got pictures to take. So I could get this up and out to you. Here is... Here's this nice little easy one that I just kind of picked up. It's kind of a tone on tone. And then, like I said, I'm going to finish with the black at the bottom. I think that would be pretty. And uh, just put a little bit and take some good photographs of it. And, of course, once you take it off the needle, it's going to spread and just... Just spread out and just blossom even more. This is not, um, it doesn't go over the shoulder. It just comes to the edge of the, sh of the top of your shoulders. It's a collar, not like a capelet or anything. So that's why we don't have to really worry too much about sizing. But I just split it so that we who are more fluffy would increase two times where the other size only had to increase here at the neckline. We went from 104 stitches to 208. And that's enough to get you, you know, to make a nice little collar effect. I put the extra in the larger size at the end 
because sometimes we need a little more to make it lay flat. Whew. Well, I can't think of anything else I need to add to this. I hope you like this. I hope you give it a try. Like I said, you, if you're not into uh, what kind of forever, this can be done in any color for anything. And I also have two new versions that I'm working, uh, two, two new styles that I'm working up uh, in this pretty collar pattern. So I can't think of anything else, but let's get ready and let's go Wakanda forever. <laughs> And just knit the night away. Thank you for joining me. I wish everyone everywhere. I don't know when this is going up. I hope, it may get up before Thanksgiving. But I hope you, hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And of course I am preparing things. Something. Uh, hopefully to end out the year in December. And I look forward to seeing you again. This is Jay. This is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. To all my friends. Everyone. Everywhere. Every size. Like I said, Wakanda forever or just knitting forever together. Take care and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.